welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we're not gonna be making soap. We're gonna make solid lotion bars. Um, and I've made these in the past before. I have other videos, but I'll be sharing the full recipe today. And these are such fun little bars. So what is a lotion bar, you might ask? It's kind of like a chapstick for your hands or elbows or heels or anywhere you have extra dry skin. It's literally a solid lotion bar and your own heat from your skin sort of melts the surface of the bar just a little. So you roll it around in your hands a few times, rub it in, rub, rub it on your elbows. Um, I have used it for chapstick, my own personal one. It's just a great all-purpose moisturizing bar and it's purse friendly. You can carry it in your purse real easy. I'm going to be doing a couple of different fragrances today. So we're going to make the lotion bars and I'll show you how I like to wrap them and label them. So all inclusive, we're gonna do it start to finish. Um, these are just fabulous. If you've never made a solid lotion bar before, I think you should give it a try. So these bars make wonderful gifts also. We have uh, Christmas season, uh, good stocking stuffer, teacher's gift, that sort of thing. They're just great all around. So come along and let's make some solid lotion bars. All right, we are back with all the ingredients we need to make these solid lotion bars. And let me real quick talk about the fragrances I'm gonna be using today. I'll just take through making one batch, but I'm gonna show you. I'm going to be using Cashmere Glow today. This smells so good. I'm just thinking of warm scents today, and this fits the bill, it's wonderful. I'm also gonna be using Sweet Moon from Marouge Canada such a good scent and i've done um, shampoo bars in this and other products and people really like this scent i always sell out fast and then i'm also going to do bourbon butterscotch because i had a whole series of videos using this fragrance and it was so good so i figured why not make a lotion bar to go with it also so those are the fragrances and now let me talk about one of the ingredients here which is our beeswax this beeswax right here is this beeswax that i got on amazon i'll leave a link down below um, I used to use, and this is my very last little bit of my home rendered beeswax. A girlfriend gave me a whole bunch of honeycomb and I rendered it and it was a lot of work. If you are an apiary owner or a beekeeper, my hat is off to you. That is a lot of work and it is so wonderful. Um, and this has such a nice natural honey smell to it. I love it, but I only had a little bit left. So one of the batches today is gonna get the home rendered beeswax. The other batches are gonna get this organic beeswax. So there it is. <laughs> I'm gonna set that off to the side. This is one batch worth here. I have my double boiler coming up to a simmer. And so the first thing that I wanna do is melt my beeswax down because this takes the longest to melt and I don't wanna overheat my butters and oils. So we'll get this all melted in our container and then we'll add our other ingredients. And what I have here is four ounces or 113 grams of beeswax. I'm gonna pour it in my big container here. I'm just double checking my volumes on my scale. And we'll give this a nice head start in the melting spatula. Yeah, we'll give this a nice head start for the melting so that uh, we don't have to overheat our butters. Um, I When I make lotion bars in the past. I had microwaved the oils and butters, and I personally do not have an issue with that. But boy, some people are very passionate about their microwave opinions. <laughs> so I have a double boiler. That's what we're gonna do. All right, I've got 113 grams of beeswax. Let's get this started melting, and then we'll come back and talk about the rest of the ingredients. In the meantime, while the beeswax is melting, um, if you are vegan and you don't want to use beeswax, candelilla wax works fabulous and you can just replace it one for one for beeswax. And I'll leave a link down below for some candelilla wax. And I've actually had quite a few people reach out to me over the years that they are allergic to coconut oil. If coconut oil is an issue, Babassu oil is a good replacement for coconut oil. It has the same skin feel, it's wonderful. Um, if you replace in a soap recipe, you do need to run the numbers through soap calculator, but um, in a lotion product, you can use Babassu oil, again, one for one for the coconut oil. So there's some replacements for you. All right, I got a good melt on my beeswax. I switched over to this container because it has a little handle and I can pour it easier into the molds. So let's get onto the other oils. And this is very hot. It takes a lot of heat to melt beeswax. And so um, 
I'm gonna let most of the heat from the beeswax go ahead and melt my oils and butters, and then I'll put it back on the double boiler if I need to just liquefy it a little bit more. So let's talk about what we have here. This is our coconut oil. I have 85 grams or three ounces of coconut oil. And again, you can swap that out for Babassu if you want. And here I have my butters. I have a combination of cocoa butter and shea butter, and it's three ounces total or 85 grams total. And I split it 50-50. You could do all mango butter, all cocoa butter, all shea butter, get real creative. Uh, with this if you want, but I have a 50-50 Coco Shea split. And then here is my liquid oils. And again, you can use any liquid oil you like. What I have is a combination of avocado oil and hemp seed oil and three ounces total or 85 grams total. So I just did 50-50 on there. You could do a single oil, jojoba oil, whatever you like. <laughs> so these are the where you get real creative. Um, that's that, got the beeswax. After we get this blended in and melted, we'll talk about our next couple of ingredients going in here. But right now, let's go ahead and get, let me get, put the coconut oil in here first and get these hard oils and butters melting in the beeswax. Because my liquid oils are at room temperature, I know it's gonna cool this down, so I'm gonna let the heat here melt those butters before I add this in and chill it all down. Uh, and then we'll take a look and see if it needs to go back on the double boiler for just a minute or two. Those are pretty melted. There's still some chunks in there, but I'm gonna go ahead and add this and take a look and see how we're doing. All right, it's starting to firm up a little, so I'm gonna set it back on the double boiler and we'll be back when this is all completely melted. All right, we are back. And one of the ways you can tell if your oils are pretty well melted is they get clear again. Um, if it's cloudy, that usually means there's some butters that aren't melted all the way. So now, one of the next ingredients that I like in my lotion bar, and this is a negotiable ingredient, you don't need to add this in, but I like how it gives the feel on the skin. It gives a dry finish feel, and that is arrowroot powder. Um, it is a, it helps cut the greasiness because this is a very buttery bar. There's no water phase in here. It's all oils and butters. Another alternative is tapioca starch works great in here also. And I do half a teaspoon in this batch size. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. I like to add it into my really hot oils and blend it in really well until it's 100% dissolved in there. You'll see little bits floating around, just keep stirring and it will absorb in. And I just think it adds a drier finish to the feel of this. Um, but again, it's negotiable. And uh, I have not tried cornstarch or kale and clay. I get asked a lot, can I use that instead? I don't know, I, <laughs> I haven't tried it. I suggest, you know, make, make a very tiny batch of this and give, if you wanna try something else, give it a try. Make a micro batch and see how you like it. That's always a great way to try ingredients. And um, I can't try every single variable out there, so I'll leave some of that testing up to you all. And I'm looking at the side of my jar here to make sure all the little bits of the arrowroot powder are dissolved in here. And I'm calling it arrowroot powder. This says arrowroot flour. It's the same thing. I get this big bag on Amazon. Um, flour and powder are the same, so you're good to go if you have one or the other. All right, I think we got it. Next ingredient, and I didn't really measure this. Let me tear this out and I will tell you. I like to do one squeeze of vitamin E oil, and I know that's not precise. Let me see here. That's about all I do. There, we'll call it one gram. <laughs> Very tiny amount. This is an antioxidant. It just helps hold the oils and butters. This is not a preservative, but it's an antioxidant in here, and I think it's great for your skin. So a little vitamin E oil, got that all in. And now last, but not least, our fragrance. Uh, we're going to do the bourbon butterscotch. I'm going to do at 5%. I'm going to add 0.6 ounces or 17 grams of fragrance into this volume. All 
All right, now just got to get that stirred in really well. Let me get this off the scale here. I like to go several times each direction to make sure everything is really well and incorporated. There we go. That's looking great. And boy, that smells good. Here are my molds. Let's get to pouring and I'm just gonna walk away from these and let them cool at room temperature. You could pop these in the refrigerator if you were in a rush, but I'm just gonna leave them out here on the counter with my other batches and I'll, we'll come back tomorrow for unmolding. next day and here they are absolutely firmed up and ready to unmold so with the recipe we made I got 10 of these little bars and I will weigh one and tell you how much they weighed but first let's unmold one if you just put pressure underneath they just pop right out look at how adorable these are these little bee molds I got from Amazon I'll leave a link for them let's weigh this and see how much each one of these weighs 39 grams and when we do the labels, you're going to want to put the um, weight on the label for proper labeling. Um, we'll talk about that when we get to labels, but right now I've got to get these all unmolded and then we'll come back and talk about packaging and labels. All right, we are back and it's time to get these little cuties all wrapped up. I'm so excited. Um, let me tell you what's going on here. This is how I like to wrap them. This is a two ounce tin. These are just a little over one ounce bars. I use the two ounce tin. I got these on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. And they're just really nice, easy, travel friendly, go in your handbag, put them in your carry-on. They are, um, because these are solid, they're airline friendly, all of that. So these little aluminum tins are what I use. And then I like to line them. Some people will just put their lotion bar right in there. That's totally fine. I like a little cushion in there that keeps it from getting bumped around. Um, and so what I started, when I first started wrapping these, I used these because I had them. I, I, um, I wrap my round soaps in these unbleached coffee filters and they're soft and really nice and kind of organic and they go with my craft label. So I was using these and I had to cut them down to size because this is a little too big. Um, so this is how I would wrap with a coffee filter. And so after the first time I made lotion bars here on YouTube and people saw me cutting, giving these little um, papers a haircut, I had several people suggest to use the craft um, cupcake papers. And so I went ahead and bought some. I got these on Amazon and they do fit in the um, tins a little bit loose. I will show you what I do to make these work and they are very convenient and I don't have to cut them. But this little, the little circle is kind of loose in here and the, uh, and the lotion bar is a wider diameter. So I just put it in there and just kind of open it up with my fingers like this and then it fits the lotion bar just perfect. So there's the muffin cup, and here is the coffee filter. The way that I do the coffee filters is sink that down, and then I have extra and I fold it over. So it makes them very cozy in here so they don't bump around at all. When they're in here, they can still bump around a little. So I don't know, I'm mixed. I think these look really adorable, but this actually would travel a little better because it's not going to shake around at all. So if you want a cozier fit in your tin, use the coffee filter. If you like the look of this, these muffin tin or these muffin liners are so easy and convenient. So let's get the lid on there and now let's talk about labels. So it shakes a little, not bad. All right, let's get to our labels. These are two inch circles from onlinelabels.com and I use their Maestro label designer. The font and the design is all on there. They have different templates you can look at for ideas and um, they're pretty 
easy to navigate, I think, and I'm not technology minded at all. So what you have on here is who I am, what this product is, the name of the product, the ingredients in descending order from greatest to least, and the weight of the product. That's what you need on your lotion bar. And I especially like that on lotions, lotion bars, and things that are leave-on products. The ingredients are very important because of allergies and things. Soap is a rinse-off product, and um, ingredients on the label is a discussion that many people have had. But for leave-on products, ingredients are a must. So, so simple, they're just little stickies. I like the craft paper um, on onlinelabels.com. When you go to look up the two inch label, they have this in white and colored and clear and all kinds of stuff. I like the craft, that's just kind of the theme of my shop. But I think they just do the job perfectly. And there it is, all ready to go. All right, so I have a little underweight bar here that I'm gonna keep for myself, and let me show you how to use it. So it's, you know, when you hold it, it doesn't come off in your skin, but I just like to, the heat of my hands will just melt the surface just a teeny little bit. Rub it, that's about all it takes. And I don't know if you can see a little shine. It's in my hand, and you just rub it like it's great on your cuticles. I would do it on my elbows, heels. I've used this as a chapstick. I keep one in my purse, and I will put it on my lips. Um, I have allergies, and I blow my nose a lot during allergy season, and my nose gets chapped. I use my lotion bar. Um, I know that's kind of gross. I don't share it with anyone else, but if my personal lotion bar gets used <laughs> on my lips and my nose and anywhere I need it, but it absorbs right in. It's not shiny, it's not sticky. It just feels wonderful, very moisturizing. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything going on in the studio here. I hope you give the recipe a try. Let me know if you like a solid lotion bar, if you've ever tried one, uh, or you give the recipe a try, what you think. I'd love to hear back from you. And I hope you have a wonderful day.